County Board of Education. We do have all members present at the forum. At this time, I'd like to introduce Hannah Crumpy, who is a third grade student at Old Forge Elementary. Hannah is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Hannah? to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hannah, would you like to stay up at the microphone for a minute, please? It's so nice to have you here with us. Thank you for leading us. You're welcome. Would you like to introduce the folks you have with you this evening? I have my mom, my brother, my dad, my principal, and my grandfather. Welcome, all. Thank you for bringing And my sister. And your sister. <laughs> <laughs> there's somebody else here, too. Is there someone else here? Mr. Stauffer asked me if there's yeah, someone else. And I said, she said grandfather. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear her. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I would like to know, Hannah, how things are at Old Forge these days. Good. Good? <laughs> what do you enjoy most about? Math. Oh, math. Yeah, all right. Ooh. Oh. So in math class, do you like solving word problems? What's the, what things do you like to do in math? Um, I like doing my cornerstones. Oh. And I like to work on paper. You like to work on paper. That's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And when you're not in school and you're not doing math, what kinds of things do you enjoy? Art. 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 Do you have a particular medium that you like? Do you paint? Do you draw? Draw. You draw. Colleagues, do you have anything you'd like to ask Hannah? I okay. have one. OK. I'd like to know, what, what is your favorite Crumpy donut. Glaze. <laughs> um, Glaze. <Glaze. laughs> That's one of my many favorites, Hannah. Have you made a donut? Yeah. You have? Awesome. How, awesome. If you're good at math, how many donuts has your grandfather made? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Hannah, do you have any questions that you would like to ask of us? No? Well, I thank you again for coming out this evening and for leading us, and I wish you all the best back there at Old Forge. Have a great rest of the school year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll have the approval of this evening's agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. South. All those in favor of the agenda for this evening? Okay. We have a unanimous vote with the student member concurring. We we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Madam President, I move for the approval of the work session minutes dated Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Any additions or corrections to the minutes of January 21st? No? All those in favor? Okay, we have seven affirmative votes. Student member concurs. Madam President, I move for the second motion of the approval of the closed, business, uh, closed session minutes dated Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Any additions or corrections to that set of minutes? All those in favor? We have seven affirmative votes. And on the third motion, I move for the approval of the business meeting minutes dated Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any additions or corrections to that set of minutes? All those in favor? Okay, we have seven affirmative votes, and the student member concurs. 
And we'll move right along to the superintendent's report. Dr. Michael. Okay, for the first part of our report, we have three recognitions this evening. Our first one, I'm gonna ask uh, Cody Pine to come to the microphone in just a minute, introduce some guests we have here from First Energy and uh, recognize some of our grant um, individuals that received grants from First Energy. We're very appreciative of their uh, support. Uh, in supporting our teachers with some STEM initiatives. After they present, we're gonna go down front, uh, and after they present, we'll go down front, and then uh, Scott Berman's gonna come forward. He's gonna share a little bit about our We the People state champions. It uh, will be a, not a repeat or three repeat, it'll be their fifth time, uh, different children, but from the same school, but I'll let Scott share a little bit about that. And then finally, Helen Huffer will come forward. It's school uh, counselor week and we want to recognize our counselors and the hard work that they do. So with that, Cody, I'll turn it over to you for a second, and when you, before you introduce our grant award winners, we'll give a second here for the board members to be down front. So go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Michael. Uh, good evening, uh, President Williams, member of the board. Uh, tonight, I'm very proud to have with us uh, Mr. Jim Sears, Mr. Dave Klein from First Energy, here to help us congratulate and award our teachers the First Energy Grant. Um, these grants were submitted from our WCPS teachers to fund various projects and initiatives in their classroom. And we really, really appreciate the support that First Energy provides to us um, in, in, the, in a granting level and along with the apprenticeship level. Uh, so at this time, I'd ask Mr. Sears just to tell us a little bit about um, what the First Energy STEM grant um, means to First Energy. Well, thank you very much and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm happy to report that the response that we've gotten from Washington County has just been tremendous. Uh, we had, I believe, a total of 11 uh, STEM grants that our foundation issued uh, to Washington County teachers, which is by far the highest number of any of the counties that we serve. And, and we are very happy and very proud to be able to partner with local school systems in our territory through our foundation in order to promote science, technology, engineering, and math. So we're just happy to be here and glad we were able to make the, uh, the, the revised date since the weather. We had a few snowflakes, I think, last time we were supposed to come here. Uh, but uh, definitely, um, we, we look forward to doing this again. And, and let's see if we can get more than 11 for next year. So. Uh, we're happy to you know, help and, and, and certainly very proud and very pleased to be able to award these uh, grants out to the local teachers. Thank you. Board members, From Smithsburg Middle School, Jonas Hurst. From Washington County Technical High School, Carrie Johnson. From Washington County Technical High School, Bill Donahue. From Washington County Technical High School, Brian Henry. From Washington County Technical High School, Cynthia Logston. And from William Sport Elementary School, Stacy Hood. Thank 
Good evening, Dr. Michael and members of the board. Tonight, we would like to recognize from Boonesboro High School students who competed and were victorious at the We the People State Competition. Students competed on January 9th, 2020 in Annapolis, Maryland. We the People is a simulated congressional hearing providing students an opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding of constitutional principles and ideas. These students will prepare for the national competition to be held April 24th through 27th in Washington, D.C. This is the fifth year in a row that Boonesboro High School has advanced to the national competition. We will recognize members of the team, their student coach, their advisor, and their principal. And if we could hold applause until all names have been announced, it would be appreciated. Starting with the team, Lena, Elmo Handis. Abby Faisenbaker. Matthew Green. Blake Harmon. Lauren Kaufman. Connor Lawrence. Abigail Olson. Andrew Scalise. Andrew Simonson. Their student coach, Claire Dever. Their faculty advisor, Miss Ashley Basick. and their principal, Dr. Michael Kahanick. Congratulations. We'd like to take a moment to recognize the school counselors. Um, the Board of Education signed a proclamation um, 
this week in honor of National School Counseling Week, which I'm going to read to you. Whereas school counselors are actively committed to helping students explore their abilities, strengths, interests, and talents as these traits relate to career awareness and development. And whereas school counselors work with teachers and other educators to help students explore their potential and set attainable goals for themselves. And whereas school counselors seek to identify and utilize community resources that can enhance and complement comprehensive school counseling programs and help students become protective members of society. And whereas comprehensive developmental school counseling programs are considered an integral part of the educational process that enables all students to achieve success in school. Therefore, be it proclaimed that February 3rd through 7th, 2020 is observed by Washington County Public Schools as National School Counseling Week. We'd like to recognize representatives from each one of the levels um, as leaders in years in our county. Doc Holliday from Hancock High School on elementary counselors. Kristen Gano for middle school counselors from Boonesboro Middle School. <laughs> and Jack Guest representing high school counselors from North Hagerstown High School. have a few reports a little bit later on the program, but that's all I have at this time. Thank you, Dr. Michael. At this time, we have public comment. I have no one who has signed up in advance. Is there anyone out there who would like to come forward and speak during public comment? Okay. We'll move on to old business. We have no old business this evening. This is Williams. Yes, sir. Could I have a second before we... I want to like to address a, uh, a letter that was um, submitted last week to the or the last meeting to the board. It was concerning um, the students and a parent up at the Marshall Street School, and I was trying to give it some thought. And I'd like to see if there might be um, consensus to uh, allow our staff, um, the superintendent, to look into a possibility of. Um, switching schools, the Marshall Street School uh, for the Funkstown Elementary School. I know that we're, we're going to be mothballing that school and we've had a lot of concerns about the location of our, our students, um, most vulnerable students that we have in Washington County. And I thought that it might be a possibility to just look at uh, the pros and cons and if there would be any um, uh, value to um, moving those students to the other end of town since we we're planning on mothballing that school. So uh, I just would um, ask if there was consensus um, to at least give it some consideration and um, just see if there's any value to that. Thank you, Mr. Gesser. Colleagues, anyone have anything to say or questions for Mr. Gesser? 
so if there was consensus, how would that work? Would that be an action item at a future meeting, or? Um, I think as consensus, it would just be us asking the superintendent to look, look into it, it okay. to direction. look at the okay. feasibility. Got it. I'd just like to say thank you, Mike, for coming up with that idea. I've, I've also been very concerned and been hearing from parents as well, and, and I'm thankful that you brainstormed an idea that we could look at. It may not work, it may be, but it's just something that we can say that we're we're trying to do, you know, as much as possible and you know, to look into different avenues and thinking outside the box. So it's totally up to the staff to come up with the, the numbers and um, and then maybe you know, talk to delegate uh, a delegation to see if there's any possibility of some help that way. But that's up to the staff. We have consensus. Anyone strongly disagree? We're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gessard. Um, under new business, our first item of consideration is this evening's consent agenda. Mr. Bankdorf. <clears throat> Tonight, I have five, five items for your review. Uh, these items were reviewed by our purchasing committee and are being recommended for approval. And staff is available if you have any additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move to approve the awards, renewals, and procurements for device repairs, iPads, MacBooks, Chromebooks, etc., <coughs> renewal to iFixYourEye Corporation and Lifeline Rescue at the unit prices listed. School-based mental health providers renewal to the Mental Health Center of Western Maryland, Villa Maria of Mountain Maryland, and San Mar Children's Home Incorporated at the hourly rates listed. MRO equipment supplies and services to W.W. Granger at an approximate yearly spend of $60,000. Math inventory to Houghton Mifflin Harcourt at a cost of $82,990 and HVAC equipment installation service and related services to Dakin Applied not to exceed $150,000 per fiscal year. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Is there a second? Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Any questions? Any discussion? Okay, then we'll move to the vote. The vote is on Mr. Bickford's motion to approve this evening's consent agenda. All those in favor? We have seven affirmative votes, and the student member concurs. Thank you. Thank you. Second item of consideration is a memorandum of understanding between the Washington County Board of Education and the Conica Jig Little League, Inc. Mr. Prue, good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Williams, Dr. Michael, members of the board. Staff has been working with the Conica Jig Little League. They operate uh, their Little League program on the baseball field that is partially on land at Springfield Middle School. Part of that field is also on property owned by the town of Williamsport. They've expressed an interest in erecting lights for uh, evening games to potentially uh, open the opportunity for more uh, tournament type play on that field with, with nighttime activity. Staff has arranged uh, a memorandum for your approval uh, for the land use, for the erection of the lights, the maintenance of the lights as necessary. Uh, and, and providing for the proper care of uh, our asset, the field. Uh, this field is also adjacent to uh, a play field that is part of a, an agreement we have with Parks and Recreation. Uh, and we have made the county aware of uh, the potential of the light standards, which uh, will be on the edge of that facility. Uh, the term of the MOU is for five years with one five-year renewal, at which time uh, that MOU would have to be renewed in full as we get to the year 2030. Uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to assist. Thank you, Mr. Crew. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move for the approval of the MOU by and between the Washington County Board of Education and the Conica Jig Little League Incorporated. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Is there a second? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Any questions for Mr. Prue or any discussion? motion is on the approval of the MOU by and between the Washington County Board of Education and the Conica Jig Little League Inc. All those in favor? Okay, we have seven affirmative votes and the student member concurs. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our next item under consideration is a request of the bar of the Barbara Ingram, excuse me, a request of the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts Foundation Inc. to approve a naming right agreement. Mr. Trotta. Thank you. Good evening. On November 20th, 2019, the Board of Education and the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts Foundation entered into a naming rights agreement that authorized the foundation to identify entities and persons who would be willing to donate funds in exchange for being granted naming rights to the new academic center or the facilities um, at the academic center and the Barberingham School for the Arts school campus. The foundation is now requesting that it be authorized to proceed with a naming right on the exterior of the new academic center. The foundation must fully account for the funds related to this naming right and they, they, um, they must also collect these funds. The amount of the proposed naming right is $1 million. The donor would provide $200,000 per year until the total amount is paid. The first payment will be due on or before June 30, 2020. Is there Thank a you. motion? Uh, Mr. Prue's going to offer some additional oh, comments. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I think uh, staff has circulated a rendering of the of the signage, the lettering on the on the face of the building uh, for board's approval uh, in the name. That uh, lettering has also uh, reached consensus with the foundation as well as the donor. Uh, I think the last loophole really is that staff is working with historic board to make sure we don't have any. Uh, city or historic board provisions as it relates to the signing, but we don't anticipate any at this juncture. It, and I would just conclude by saying that the name uh, that's to appear on the exterior of the new academic center is the Vincent Roth Grow Academic Center. We're requesting the Board of Education's approval of this agreement at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Pru. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move to approve the naming right agreement for the new academic center addition, which is adjacent to the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts, as requested by the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts Foundation, Inc. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Now, Any questions? Any I would, discussion? Yeah, I would just make a comment that uh, I'm very happy to make this motion this evening and very gracious of the generosity that exists in Washington County between many different high schools including this latest gift to us to Barbara Ingram um, and for those of you who don't know this is especially fitting because Mr. Grow um, recently passed last year I believe this is the first donation that his estate is and a, a foundation in his honor is making and he was uh, gracious enough and Wayne fill in the details but he donated the building that the Barbringham School is in, and it is named after his wife, who was an art teacher in Washington County. So it seems uh, very fitting that these two buildings will be side by side. Um, and so I want to express my appreciation to the Grow family um, for this gift. Um, I would just like to thank the, the foundation, Mimi's back in the back. Um, I know that she's worked very hard um, for this uh, donation and for the BISFA and the partnerships that we have with our downtown um, folks. So um, I'm very appreciative to all those folks who have um, supported this and Mimi for all the things that you've done. Thank you very much. I will be supporting it. Anyone else? Well said, gentlemen. Well said. Okay, the motion is to approve the naming right agreement for the new academic center edition, which is adjacent to the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts as requested by the Barbara Ingram School for the Arts Foundation, Inc. All those in favor? Okay, we have seven affirmative votes and the student member concurs. Thank you. So our next consideration is the building dedication plaques for the urban improvement project and the new Sharpsburg Elementary School. Mr. Prue and Mr. Rollins. 
Thank you again. Uh, seems to be a hot seat here tonight. Uh, we have two building dedication plaques uh, for your approval this evening. They are, uh, they do require board approval per policy FFB. Uh, we will note that uh, on board docs and as well circulated to the board members this afternoon, uh, there was an edit to the, uh, the plaque on the uh, Barbara Ingram edition, the UIP edition, the Vincent Rothbro Academic Center as opposed to Academic Building, which was the initial addendum that went out. Uh, so that correction has been made, but we are seeking your permission uh, tonight and your approval on these dedication plaques. It's worth noting, because uh, a question just came up among staff, that the, the year indicates that the, uh, the year the building is opened, uh, the elected bodies that are represented on the plaque represent the bodies that were uh, sitting in your seats as well as downtown at the commissioner's office at the time that the building was authorized for construction. Per policy. For policy. Thank you. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move to approve the design of the building dedication plaques for both the urban improvement project at UIP and the new Sharpsburg Elementary School. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stalford. Any questions? Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion to approve the design of the building dedication plaques for the Urban Improvement Project and the new Sharpsburg Elementary School. We have seven affirmative votes and the student member confirms. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, our item of new business is the Board of Education's FY 2021 <coughs> draft budget. Dr. Michael. Thank you, Mrs. Williams, members of the board. Uh, we spent uh, a fair amount of time today at the county commissioner's meeting where we reviewed the most recent uh, draft budget of the superintendent as well as the work session uh, two weeks ago, I believe. And then prior to the winter break, we also reviewed uh, the first draft and there were very few changes to the second draft. At this time, we're requesting that the board would adopt the superintendent's draft budget to be their own budget for your additions, uh, deletions, corrections. Uh, the budget, uh, if fully, it's balanced currently at $300,663,925. It provides for the unique academic needs for our children, uh, particularly some of our most vulnerable children, some of our children with the greatest challenges, um, English language learners, some of our students that are um, having some academic challenges. It provides a variety of resources, basically due to inflation on uh, factors beyond our control, contracts and things like that that increase, and a very modest raise potential for employees uh, pending contract negotiations. And with that, we'll seek the board's approval to adopt the budget. Thank you, Dr. Michael. Is there a motion? Madam Pre go ahead. No. President Williams, I move to adopt the superintendent's FY 2021 recommended general fund budget as the Board of Education's FY 2021 Draft General Fund Budget. Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Any discussion? Any questions? Okay, the motion is to adopt the superintendent's FY 2021 recommended general fund budget as the board's FY 2021 draft general fund budget. All those in favor? We have seven affirmative votes and the student members concur. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Prue. Thank you, Dr. Michael. And we're back to you, Dr. Michael, for okay. the rest of your superintendent's report. So tonight we want to provide you with an early uh, literacy intervention update. Uh, I have Dr. Hanks and Lori Ridgely here with us this evening uh, that are going to review our interventions. But uh, before we start with them, I'd like to share a video. Um, with that, we'll roll our video. It's no secret that I'm very passionate about reading. Um, it's definitely one of the things that I care about the most. I happen to have been a struggling reader when I was in school, um, and that's why I became a teacher, and also why I became a principal, so I can make a difference um, in the lives of kids and help them become readers. Um, so when a student is struggling with reading, it, it hits a deep spot in my heart. My first grade teacher, Mrs. Rieger, changed my life um, and, and I love that we get the chance every single day to make that difference in the life lives of multiple children. Are you ready? Here we go. 15 minutes. 
just a small part of the school day, but it's making a big impact with striving kindergarten readers across the school system. We're assigned 22 students a day, and we get 15 minutes for each student. It sounds like it's not a lot of time, but it actually works out perfectly. Um, you're not going to the point where they're getting bored or frustrated. It's just enough to get that lesson in and get that, get that time with them. Melanie Hickson works with students in class at Clear Spring Elementary. They get her undivided attention, encouragement, guidance, all to support them as readers. I try to be like very energetic. Um, I try to keep their focus and make sure they're, they're getting everything that we're doing and everything I'm saying. Melanie is one of 10 reading tutor paraprofessionals working in Washington County Elementary Schools. They're taking a targeted approach, maximizing their time with students. What the reading intervention teacher can then do is look at the specific needs of each individual student beyond the whole group. If it happens to be um, knowing rhyming words or um, letter sounds, letter names and letter sounds, she can work specifically on that. Individualized lessons can focus on the building blocks of reading, like stepping stones, a proven intervention tool. It was really fun as far as, you know, watching them grow with that program. Um, sometimes you just had like this light bulb moment for, you know, particular students and they would, especially with the rhyming words, and they would get it and they would get so excited and start yelling out rhyming words and then we just kept rhyming and rhyming. From there, they grow into more detailed concepts. I let them pick a book and we try to look over concepts of print. Um, and just, you know, watch them read and make those letter sounds. And this is where them making the letter sounds and trying to blend those sounds really come into play. Clue, clue, clue. Having Melanie here every day, day in, day out, 15 minutes with the students, they get to know her. They anticipate and get excited, actually, to have that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, in a similar way that a child at home would love to sit on your lap and read a book with you. Children excited to read, growing a lifelong love of learning. When we start young and when we um, can sit with them and they can read a book and look at us and give us a high five, that is a sign that they feel confident, not just in reading, but they feel confident as a, as a child. So it's a little bit bigger than knowing your letters and your letter sounds. Um, it's, it's doing what we can to make the child um, have a chance to be a successful person um, and we take a lot of pride in that. It matters to us. In case you missed it, uh, <laughs> reading is a huge deal here in Washington County. Uh, the last three years, uh, I mean we talk about reading I think every week if not every day. Um, the team was very excited this week's Educational Leadership Magazine. Every article in here is about reading. So I get this every month or every two months. You know, I try to thumb through it, uh, you know, copy two or three articles, read those, um, you know, from beginning to end. But I'm reading every article in this. So Laura frequently gets a text from me if there's two articles that seem to be uh, in contrast to each other about reading. There's a lot of different approaches to reading. But I'm very confident in the work that we've done here in Washington County. I can see the growth in students. We can see the growth in data. One of our big initiatives is this Reading Tutor initiative. Uh, Lori meets with that team of uh, 10 IAs regularly. Uh, they're, they're very excited about the work that they're doing. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Hanks here and the team, let them share a little bit more about it. All right, we're uh, prepared. Good evening, everyone. It's very hard to follow a video like that. Um, but what we wanted to do is just share, uh, back in the summer, I shared with you about our universal screener, that we were going to be one of the first in the state to be able to do something like this, um, which will be law in September. Um, that screener that we were using is Dibbles at the kindergarten level, and um, that is the tool that we're using to identify students who may be at risk or have some gaps in their learning that we could fill right away rather than waiting over time. So Dibbles is an assessment. It takes an average of only about five minutes per student, but what it does do is some quick activities with them to find out where they are in their letter names, um, phonemic awareness, letter sounds, decoding, and word reading. Um, of course, we don't expect students in kindergarten to word read, but as the year goes on, we look for those numbers to increase. So it's kind of a uh, progress monitoring tool for us as well. And so based on those assessments, we were able to target students um, specifically that could use the intervention from our reading tutors, as well as our other paras um, that are already in school. So it's not just the 10 students, but also every school 
um, has access to this. Stepping Stones to Literacy that you saw referenced in the video is about 25 years old. Um, it is 25 minutes, 15 minutes a day, and it's a one-on-one -on -one intervention. Uh, we learned that that relationship is just as important as the skills that they're learning, um, so that a teacher's giving that undivided attention to a child. We bi-weekly progress monitor, and Dr. Ridgely's gonna share a little bit more about what that looks like in the program, and then we reassess these students um, to find out if we need to exit them or if we need to maybe make the intervention a little bit more intensive, which we do have plans for that as well. So I wanted to share, uh, I'm gonna actually let Dr. Ridgely share first of all, that I'll share the data that we have um, regarding what she's doing with these reading tutors. What am I doing? Um, so it's been quite an experience, but with the 10 paras, we do train them. So they are highly trained in the different um, screening tools and the interventions that follow. And then they are regionally placed. So um, some of them might have up to two to three schools depending on their region. And with that, each one is um, supported based on the assessment data. So when, within that region, what we do is we, once we assess, then we look at all of the data that comes back. We analyze it and determine the needs of specific schools and um, certain students. And then from that, we develop an action plan to move forward to say, okay, so now we know the needs. Where do we need to put um, some of our resources? With that said, some paras have up to 20, 19 to 21 students, depending on their schedule and the needs within that school. And so far, we've had about, um, about 200 kindergarten students service daily. So um, that's pretty exciting for us to be able to touch the lives of those little bodies every day. And the schedules um, vary and they change on um, bi-weekly to monthly to marking period depending on the need and depending on the intervention that they are in. So our paras bi-weekly progress monitor. So every two weeks they were reporting to the teachers that progress that the students are making or they're not making and then the next steps are made based on that. So. <clears throat> So we did a mid-year testing of our students. Um, it was not required actually, but we highly encouraged based on the efforts that we were making throughout the district to say, are we having an impact that we wanted to see? So down the left side there, you see the component. Those are the um, subtests within the Dibbles assessment and the composite scores putting it together. It's important to know that that targets change as the year goes on. And so they lift what was expected in the fall of kindergarten by the winter of kindergarten, we expect more. For example, if you only needed to really recognize five to 10 letters, by the middle of winter, we're hoping you're up to 15 or 20 letters based on the instruction you have. So when you look at those comparable numbers, um, we see positives on the right column all the way down. That is a celebration, but I can also tell by your expression that you see the same concerns that we see. What we are excited to be able to celebrate is this screener has allowed us to target the area of most concern. And when we look at the data, you can see certain areas. Now, decoding is not an expectation in kindergarten at this point. As students learn the skills, they go on to decode. So we'll continue to monitor that as improvement. Um, however, if you look at phonemic awareness, we learned in the fall that 14% was a number of great concern. It's allowed us to focus our attention, our resources, and our professional development in that area for teachers. And we do learn that for a lot of teacher training programs, they don't get into those finite skills of literacy, and that does involve continued professional development and collaboration. We celebrated in January um, over 80, probably 80 to 100 kindergarten and pre-kindergarten teachers that attended our professional development that was offered specifically in this area. We had another 70 pre-K to first grade teachers tonight at a professional development in Eastern Elementary. So our teachers are on board and eager to learn how do we adjust this now? Phonemic awareness is a skill that will impact writing later on. We recognize that writing is a weakness in a lot of our students and we may have found the uh, point of the issue as early as pre-K and kindergarten. So addressing this now is gonna have major long-term effects for our students. So we celebrate the positives um, and we expect that in this spring, with all of this attention and that skill, we're eager to see what our spring testing is going to yield for our students. 
early signs, which Dr. Ridgely usually gets upset with me for stocking data before it's done. Um, we are doing our mid-year pre-K assessing right now, and those numbers are looking phenomenal. Uh, the younger the child is, the quicker it is to intervene, and that's what it's proving to us. So there is a lot of excitement in this data. So with that said, um, the number of kindergarten students, <clears throat> excuse me, that have received stepping stones from that, and they were retested for middle of the year for just the reading district tutors. Um, there are 10. We have two, we had 245 kindergarten students who had had services over that period of time for intervention. And to the middle of the year, 235 of those kindergarten students um, had made progress within the composite score. So that, that made us very excited to know that what we are doing is working um, and we're having an impact. So we're very excited. And you can see by the school that was represented tonight, that's, I think, the feeling of all the principals that have been impacted by this. So it's exciting. And for students that are not making progress, when you see those 10 students, we are also able to target early on that there may be something more than just lack of experience or exposure. Um, so again, we can fine tune and intensify the intervention at five rather than waiting till typical second or third grade when it starts to come out. So we've kind of accelerated our focus. Instead of children being able to read at the end of third grade, we'd like to see our children read by the end of second grade <coughs> to this kindergarten effort is where we kind of put our energy right now. Um, again, this is something we talk about regularly, not just a tutoring program, but staff development that Dr. Hanks just talked about. Um, I'm very, very pleased. I didn't get the opportunity, obviously, to run over to Eastern, but I generally try to stop by the professional developments, particularly at Eastern and Ramps, because there's generally 50, 75 people there frequently. And our staff has really turned out working extremely hard uh, to help benefit our children. These are things that won't show up in data files and state uh, results for years and years to come. Uh, maybe never with the changes at the state, but it's going to benefit children for their lifetime. And uh, I want to thank uh, both Dr. Hanks and Dr. Risley for their work, but all of our teachers that are working hard in our reading intervention. Uh, IA is kind of a new position we created on our own, and uh, one of the things when I met with the team was I said, we can't take these 10 positions, let them get lost. Frequently, when you give staff to principals, uh, and I'm guilty of this myself, you kind of get greedy with the staff. You keep them to yourself. You don't want to share with other people, and sometimes their mission gets lost. Well, Dr. Ridgely's the uh, hawk on making sure that doesn't happen, uh, and we're moving these people around and sharing them, and they're getting to a lot of different students throughout the county. So I'm sure the team would be glad to answer any questions you might have. I'm just, just from a... Uh, uh, just to learn the difference between phonemic and decoding. So the easiest way to describe phonemic awareness is what you can do with your eyes closed. Mm. Uh, it's what you hear. It's being able to hear sounds, hear sounds in words. So if you heard the word cat, you would be able to say cat. Mm. And so for a child to be able to write, they would actually have to think about the word, break it up into its parts, and write the letters to it. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how that skill of step before you put paper to pen uh, is pretty essential. Mm -hmm. And if we bypass that, it's also rhyming, asking students to rhyme words. That's the ability to be able to see that some words are similar and some are different. How are they the same and different? Beginning sounds, ending sounds, all of it are pre-reading skills. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So phonemic awareness and <coughs> how many of the other one? Now, you said decoding. But Phonics. To describe the difference of those two. Phonics is putting the print to it. So if I can say B is B, I might have put the A at the end of it, which I'm not allowed to do. See, I knew it. I knew it without looking at her. Let's have a lesson. Phonemic <laughs> awareness is hearing it. Phonics is being able to see it in print and recognize that that print holds meaning. So the stepping stones, for example, starts out with animal sounds. So a lot of us do that as parents with our children, where when you pass a cow, you automatically ask a child, what does a cow say? Moo. Right away, you've taught a child at about two years old that something can represent something else. A cow represents the sound moo. And that's the exact same skill that a L represents L, same exact skill. And so for a lot of our children that don't have that early exposure to sounds and an object that represents that sound, this is a whole new skill for them. So the idea of the 25 lessons of stepping stones is to close that gap quickly and move them on. Any other questions?
individually for this very important work that you're doing. I don't think there's any more important work that's happening in our school system. And I thank you for your efforts. And I hope you'll come back in the spring to tell us what those results are. Only if they're good. <laughs> I, know they'll be good. I know they'll be good. Thank you. Thank you President Williams, the uh, remainder of my things I think are just pretty much announcements. Second marking period obviously concluded here last week. Uh, secondary grades should be posted to parent view by February 7th. Elementary grades by February 10th. And on February 14th, we'll be sending home uh, printed report cards as an additional follow up. Our ESP of the Year Award Center is coming up on February 12th. That starts at 5 o'clock social hour. I think dinner actually in the program begins at 6. It'll be at the Elks uh, Lodge, and tickets are available through the Washington County Educational Foundation. And I'm just very excited to be part of our first year of uh, recognizing the ESP Employee of the Year. So I think that'll be pretty exciting. If you have the opportunity to attend that, I encourage you to do that. The same night, we also have Elementary Arts Festival. We had one in the fall I was able to attend. It was a choral and arts program. This one is, uh, I think, more instrumental music and arts program. Won't be able to attend because I'll be at the ESP dinner. Um, but I hope people will turn out to that February 12th at 6 o'clock at North High to support our elementary students. And uh, prior to our next board meeting on February 17th, we'll actually observe President's Day on February 17th, and central office and schools will be closed. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Michael. We'll move to personnel action. Dr. Bishop, good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Williams, Dr. Michael, and elected board members. As discussed earlier in closed session, there are several staff changes for your review tonight. And at this time, I ask for your approval of our personnel actions. Thank you. Is there a motion? Madam President, move for approval of the personnel actions as discussed earlier today. Thank you, Mr. Ridenauer. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. The vote is on Mr. Ridenauer's motion to accept the personnel actions from earlier this afternoon. And we have seven affirmative votes. Thank you, Dr. Bush. Thank you. Okay. Next item on our agenda, board member committee reports. Would you like to begin down there, Mr. Mackley? Uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, that we have two guests here tonight in attendance from the Washington County Association of Student Councils. Um, there are two of the three candidates to be the next student member of the Board of Education. Um, from our left, we have Kevin Bokum, who's a, a student at North Hagerstown High School. And then seated next to him is Griffin Nip, a student at Williamsport High School. Um, we also have a student from South Hagerstown High School running, but she was un unable to make it tonight. Um, and again, that, that election will take place on March 10th here at CES. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Like to do a curriculum instruction? Yes, curriculum and instruction did not meet uh, last month, but we will be meeting Tuesday, February 25th at 4 p.m. in the board conference room. Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Mr. Bickford, finance? Uh, finance committee met last Tuesday. Thank you to my colleagues for filling in for someone who was absent. <laughs> I should say absent-mindedly absent, but uh, uh, but they did discuss the December financial report, second quarter budget adjustments. Uh, we reviewed grants, um, and uh, they updated the unpaid school meal balances. And we have not scheduled. Um, we're floating a, a, a meeting for the end of March. Um, committee members will be uh, invited to that meeting, and I will set my alarm. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bigford. Human resources. Would you like to go, Mr. That's, Ryder? That's fine, uh, Madam President. We have not met. Uh, there's discussion with uh, Human Resource Department whether or not we need a meeting this month. <clears throat> they are pretty much tied up with a lot of issues as far as negotiations for our concerns, so we're waiting to see. Ryder. I'm mixing things up here a little bit. Have you noticed that, Mr. Gessford? I have. We'll have you do facilities <laughs> now. Uh, facilities have uh, d has not met since the last meeting, and um, right now we are scheduled for March. So more information to follow. Thank you. This is for sure. Policy review and development. Policy committee met on January uh, 30th. We continued the work we've been doing on the equity policy 
Our next meeting is this Thursday, February the 6th at 10 a.m. and we will hopefully be winding up that equity policy on Thursday. So expect to see it at our next board meeting, hopefully. Mr. Stumper, would you like to give us a legislative response team update? Uh, I'm going to be very brief. What I will do for members is <clears throat> give a more detailed uh, thing, a report to them. But I'll just go through a few emails. I, what they was, is January 27th, I attended the Maryland Association of Boards of Education uh, Legislative Committee in Annapolis. Uh, we have another meeting on uh, this coming Monday. And then we'll have another meeting uh, when it's uh, May Legislative Day on Thursday at 10 o'clock and then followed by the luncheon where all the politicos come in and talk to us and so forth and so on. I just want to highlight a few bills. Uh, I taught government for a lot of my years as a high school teacher. I still have a great interest in government. Uh, but uh, I often said facetiously even before I was on the board, uh, I'm very glad that the uh, General Assembly of Maryland only meets 90 days a year because of the laws that they come up with or the proposed laws that they come up with. Um, so I'll just highlight a few bills here. One is House Bill 15, uh, the main legislative committee on a vote of the members of the committee voted to oppose this bill. The synopsis of it is it's a certificate of dental health beginning in the 2022-23 school year each student enrolled in a public elementary or secondary school in the state shall submit to the school a certificate of dental health on a schedule established by MSDE. MSDE must adopt regulations in consultation with the Department of Health to establish standards for periodic dental exams and a standard form. And uh, we opposed that bill uh, because of the number of questions that uh, arose. Uh, first of all, um, the enforcement of it, how is that going to be done, uh, the record keeping that would be involved, would the uh, school board be responsible for providing dental health services to students and so forth. So we voted to oppose that bill. Um, another bill that, uh, that we supported uh, was House Bill 19. Uh, it's another thing basically on local control requires a public school to be open for student attendance either 180 days or a minimum of 1,080 school hours during a 10-month period and so forth. You can go online and read more about that. Uh, another one is Senate Bill 34. We decided to vote or support this with very strong amendments. Uh, it's the scanning or swiping identification cards and driver's licenses. Basically, uh, as you know, to get into schools we take scan driver's licenses and the sponsor of this bill uh, is uh, against that but you know it's done as part of the security uh, a, uh, regulations of, of, of our school system so uh, we voted to support that with very strong amendments. Um, House Bill 147 we opposed uh, high school teachers teaching dual enrollment, enrollment courses. Uh, college level courses in conjunction with the junior college and so forth. Uh, somewhere in the state, this is apparently according to uh, John Woolham's, the legislative director of May, it's coming from junior colleges. What it would require, it would require basically a high school teacher teaching a dual enrollment course to have uh, a degree, a master's degree in that subject. And the speculation is that perhaps although the bill doesn't say it, would it also eventually transfer over to teachers teaching IB courses and AP courses uh, concerning that. I mean, I taught AP history for many, many years, but I don't have a master's degree in history. I have a background in it, uh, extensive uh, of coursework and stuff, but I don't have a master's degree in history. So that's um, being opposed. Um, this next one we took no position on, uh, but it is an unfunded man mandate. It basically would require a public school to install uh, menstrual uh, hygiene product dispensers in at least two restrooms on or before October 1st of this year 
and all restrooms on or before August the 1st, 2024. Uh, the, the idea was it does affect uh, uh, student health, but uh, it is an unfunded mandate because apparently there'd be no money from the state to uh, for the dispensers and so forth and so on. Um, Senate Bill 258, we decided to support this with amendments. Uh, basically, it prohibits uh, school employees from operating an electric retractable room partition in a public school except under certain circumstances, and it goes on to describe that. Uh, apparently, I don't know if, I can't remember, I didn't write it down, if it was in this state or another state where a student was killed by one of these doors and so forth. So we decided to support that with amendments. Uh, House Bill 327, school resource officers prohibited conduct. Uh, basically, it would bar them from being used to uh, unilaterally enforce discipline-related school policies and so forth. And uh, Baltimore City said, that, well, they couldn't support this because the school resource officers down there are not part of a police force like it here in Hagerstown or Washington County, but they are school board employees down there. So that raised some concerns about that. Here's another one that's um, uh, support with amendments, school discipline data collection. Uh, again, it requires uh, a great deal of record keeping, uh, but, uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't quite understand this. I found out I wasn't the only one. Uh, it says lowering the risk ratio and state comparison threshold used for identifying action for schools with high disproportionality from 3.0 to 2.0. And basically, uh, I see your sign, so you understand you can explain that to me sometime. Would you like to explain what that means? Uh, not tonight. I can't explain it exactly, but the risk ratio is basically as you look at different um, groups of students, the way the state's identified students, I think a 3.0 would be you have three times the risk we're not in jeopardy until a child's at three times the risk based on their, whatever this group is that you're identified, uh, of having this gap between all other students. So special ed versus non-special ed, if you have three times the gap, uh, so you've met this gap or risk ratio, and you have to follow state and rule, certain rules of the state to lower that gap. If they go from three to two, uh, that'd be a substantial change that we're, you would, just far more, every school in the state would be involved in the Well, Mabe's position basically was to abolish the standards like that, the numerical standards, and do away with them. Uh, House Bill 331, medical cannabis in schools, we opposed uh, basically because <coughs> the School Nurses Association, uh, both national and state, uh, see this as a violation of federal law, but you can go online and read about that. And House Bill 403, Immigration Enforcement, uh, we took no position on that. So that gives you, a, in a nutshell, what it is. And I told you it would take a while, but you insisted that I do it. So. Thank you very much. I, did. I appreciate it. I'm sure my colleagues do as well. Okay, I think that covers committee reports. And under miscellaneous business, we have consideration of future agenda items. You should have as part of your packet a list of future agenda items. Uh, we adopted our draft budget this evening and on March 3rd we'll, we will hear from uh, the Budget Advocacy and Review Committee their thoughts on the budget and we'll have uh, Mrs. Kate here for our legislative briefing um, on March 3rd. We'll also have an update on the kindergarten readiness assessment and we will have a report on the cohort graduation rate and the dropout rate. So we'll leave it there for March. That's what's upcoming. If you have a suggestion for an agenda item, please let a member of the committee know. We'll get you on the agenda for a future meeting. So we'll move to board member comments. Mr. Ridenauer, would you like to begin at oh, your end? Thank you. Mrs. Fisher? I have nothing. Thank you. Mr. Getsford. Not a thing tonight. Thank you. Alpha. I said my piece. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bigford. 
I want to thank, um, I guess, Boyd and communication staff. I'm really appreciating the videos. I assume that they're not just made for the board, but are disseminated out to the public. But I think it really is nice to see. Uh, Most of them, I know that we posted this one on my Facebook earlier today. I'm sure it has it up on our Washington County Facebook. You know, what is the a picture's worth a thousand words? I mean, clearly, video, I think, even expresses more than that. Or I guess it's multiple yeah. pictures, so it's thousands of words. But uh, they're fairly easy at this point to produce. And I say that because Aaron produces them, so I don't have yeah. the work to do. But um, it's amazing how quickly we can put those together to some degree. I mean, it does take some time. And we're going to try to continue to promote Washington County that way, try to promote things that are happening, but also to encourage people to get involved with good things that are happening in Washington County. Yeah, I think it serves two purposes. One gives us a peek into the classroom and what's happening in the public, but also it's a recognition of the good work. When somebody comes and interviews you about the good work you're doing, that props you up. So I appreciate the, the efforts that your staff is doing. I have nothing. Thank you. I have nothing. Nothing. Um, I have something. Uh, are you surprised? Last word. Last word? Okay. <laughs> this past Saturday, uh, I had the opportunity to attend the NSBA Equity Symposium that was held in Washington, D.C. Um, for the past, I guess, two and a half years, I've been serving on the MABE Ad Hoc Committee on Equity. And Mrs. Fisher mentioned in her report uh, on the work of the Policy Committee that we are working on our policy um, as required by COMAR on educational equity. So uh, I wanted to express to you my appreciation, colleagues, for allocating the funds that made it possible for me and for any and all of us, really, to take advantage of opportunities like this one. Um, so thank you very much for that. And I'd like to share with you something, a conversation that I had. From, there were 600 people there I mentioned, and most of them were board members from across the United States. And in one of the concurrent sessions, I sat beside a gentleman who was from Oregon. We were talking, and I said, um, how many students do you have in your district? And he said, 577. And I said, oh, 577. And he said, yes, we have one $43 million building K to 12 and I, I yeah my mouth just my mouth just dropped and I said and you're dealing with issues of educational equity and he said yes we are they have a lot of homelessness a lot of poverty and so you know we hear educational equity here locally in our state every state is dealing with educational equity at this time so that's my last word, aside from we stand adjourned. Thank you, Carl.